Hello my soccer universe, it's decision time. Absolutely, this is the international uh, break window where I have to say uh, almost everything will be decided except that yeah, the, uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict threw a little bit of wrench in that one and we anyway knew that there will be intercontinental playoffs coming but uh, aside from that we'll get many 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 decisions done now in this window all over the world which makes it really really exciting i actually just want to preview uh today's action because i probably will review most of that tomorrow and then we'll look ahead of what is happening uh in the african qualifiers because that is a whole story in itself uh that will be very exciting as well uh, I put here out a few, uh, put out a few matchups that are interesting yes it's very euro heavy because um, of course I will be watching a European qual qual qualifiers I'm not, not even sure if I can uh, I know I can watch the African ones but the, the other ones are either at impossible times for me or I we, I don't have the rights here to watch so uh, take it as it is but um, these two guys Australia and Japan in a pretty huge matchup for Australia uh, will meet probably already at the time when this posts. So uh, check your local listings <laughs> if you can watch it. Um, it is all, this is all to play for, for Australia. This is a must win for them. Um, I think if it's only a draw, this more or less already, uh, more or less guarantees Japan quali uh, the qualification that draw will definitely see Saudi Arabia through already. What Australia have to hope for that they beat Japan that China gets a result against Saudi Arabia, then Australia has to go to Saudi Arabia uh, to beat it. So um, it's not a very positive scenario and it's not very positive for the simple uh, reason that uh, whoever goes then into the playoffs, you know, there's the playoff against the third place team from the other group, Group A, which we'll talk about in a sec. But then you have to play it against the fifth place team from Conmebol and that might also be a step too far. So um, it is very likely that we only see four qualifiers plus Qatar from AFC this time around. Um, I said in the other group, um, Iran and South Korea, who are also meeting not too long from now, <laughs> um, are uh, already qualified. So it's basically only for first place. And maybe some FIFA point rating, uh, ratings, which may go into the uh, World Cup draw, which will happen very, very soon as well. It's all about the final spot where the UAE are in the driver's seat with a three-point cushion ahead of Lebanon. Uh, however, when I look at the upcoming matches, uh, the UAE better, better get uh, points um, against, uh, where, where, against Iraq now which are fifth uh, a place because then they have to play south korea um which is definitely not an easy one um but on the other side Le lebanon have the last game against iran so you know the uae looking relatively good and then they probably will uh, play in the playoff against australia the way things are um, working out so yeah that's the situation in asia uh, we also have Oceania, uh, which already is taking place and is played in Doha. However, it is marked by the withdrawals from um, Vanuatu and the Cook Islands. So the Group A has only the Solomon Islands and Tahiti, which will be also meeting today for who will go in first place and avoid New Zealand and who will go in second place. Speaking of New Zealand, that group, uh, there's already... Um, uh, uh, two games uh, played with New Zealand's getting, of course, six points. They also play as do the do the play today. Uh, yes, they played play today against New Caledonia, um, which is basically four. Uh, nah, New Cal Caledonia. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> getting ahead of myself. Uh, this is ahead of Papua pa pa Guinea, uh, which they have already beaten. So you know, a point, and they are through to the semifinals where then we'll play the loser of Solomon against Tahiti. Um, so that's that. Um, I can see that many would actually like, because then uh, the win of that one will play against the uh, fourth place team of CONCACAF, so North America qualification of which I am wearing Canada. I haven't even uh, justified that choice now because I don't have a CONCACAF team. I didn't want to put uh, the US because they have a big match cup come, 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 as well. I said, okay, Canada. Let's do it, Canada. Just unpacked it. So uh, <laughs> there you go. 
So yeah, um, while New Zealand is probably the also Fae favorite, and probably I would even give them a good chance against whoever they play from the CONCACAF region. Um, I think the neutral all want that someone else is going through there. Uh, just because, of, especially if it's Tahiti or Papua New Guinea or Solomon Islands, it would be really fun to have such a small nation at the World Cup. However, I think the eyes, as big as those can the eyes will definitely be on the action that is happening in Europe, which, as I already alluded to, is very much marred of what was of the um, war that Russia wages in Ukraine against the Ukrainian people. First off, uh, because of the war action, Ukraine has uh, requested that the game, their game in Scotland is postponed. So uh, that is now happening in June. So whoever, whoever wins uh, between Wales and Austria will be in the World Cup draw pot together with Scotland and Ukraine and to be decided, which is a rather underwhelming thing to have at the... Um, uh, to have at the World Cup. Also, Russia is disqualified, which means that Poland are already in the final, which they will host. I also, I said it before, does not seem quite right. Um, I would, personally, I would have taken uh, the next place team from the um, Nations League ra rankings plugged it in for Russia, maybe even give them Poland the home field advantage. But, on the other side, Poland was a non CC team, so you cannot redo the draw, whatever. I, yeah, it probably is. It is the easiest solution uh, this way, but I can see that Sweden and the Czech Republic, who supported Poland, we are not playing against Russia because Russia would have hosted the whole thing if they would have won against Poland. Um, but then on the other side, they are saying, yeah, but uh, come on. Poland's are already in the final. It's not quite fair. Poland, I think, as far as far as are playing now Scotland um, in a friendly going forward. Um, so, in the, let's go path by path. Path A, as I said, it's only Wales, Austria, with the winner playing at home to ever uh, against Scotland, Ukraine. Now, I am from Austria, as you know. Um, my nervousness level is not very high. For the simple reason that while I do think, and given recent, a uh, given results, especially at the Euros, I think that Austria is probably the strongest team by talent, by pure talent. It's the strongest team among these four. Not by much, but I think overall. Over, over. If you just look at the squad lists and what and where the players are, are, are playing, market value and and, and so on, uh, it should be pretty clear that Austria should be favored in here. However, that you are in the position that you have to play away from home is already telling. If you look at World Cup qualifying, where they finished fourth behind Scotland, this is very much telling. Austria has not beaten an opponent under Coach Foda that is ranked higher than them. And yes, it was close against Italy, but Wales is ranked higher. Under this current coach, for me, I would love to see Austria finally break the longest wait for going to a World Cup again. I would be more than happy to see this. However, I, it will also mean that the current coach who is so under coaching this team will remain and it's a standstill. So uh, give and take, I almost do not care what they are going to do. So uh, that's that. I think, as I said, by pure talent, uh, they have really convincingly beaten Ukraine at the Euros. Uh, against Scotland, uh, this was the qualifying um, phase of the Austrian national team, so this was not not good. I remember not too long ago uh, having a really good game in Wales at Wales that ended up winning. Yeah, it is, it is what it is. So yeah, and then we have to see whether Scotland and Ukraine will even play against each other if there's a possibility. So uh, this is all up, up, up in the air. I just want to point out, I still have Ukraine there just in case, because we support for Ukraine. So uh, my model says Wales, because they would have full home field advantage for 43% of qualifying and a toss up between Austria and Scotland, 20% each in Ukraine, because they would be all the way 17%. And I think it might be even lower with all the trouble going on, um, it might be. Path B, I talk about it, Poland is through, it's between Sweden and the Czechs, and then they have to face Poland. So Poland with a huge advantage, they're 57% over Sweden, 28 and the Czech Republic with 15. 
but we all know where the real drama is gonna be. And that's path C. And here I'm nervous. You know I'm an Italy fan. I have no confidence. With all the injuries that Italy have, and now Di Lorenzo even uh, got out, I mean, there will be a centre-back pairing of Marcini and Bastoni, which, you know, I'm not, on one side, not too unhappy, but who is going to score the goals? The midfield will be amazing, uh, but I think the rest of the team, yeah, it might be enough playing in Palermo to go past North Macedonia. Although North Macedonia have been getting uh, points not too long ago against Italy. So it's not it's not an easy opponent. And there are quite a few players playing in there. Even though it's part of that. At least Elif Elmas and, and so on. So North Macedonia is a pesky opponent. But um, I think the status of Italy is high enough that they should beat North Macedonia. The other drama is, of course, Portugal against Turkey. Two teams that have massively disappointed. Um, what I have to say, though, is that Portugal have done their job. They should not be in this position. Portugal have beaten Serbia away from home. The goal from Ronaldo that was clearly behind the, uh, the line did not count. If that would have counted, Portugal would not be in this position. So uh, I'm of two ways. Yes, I would love to see Italy go all through, but I, I would find it a true travesty for Portugal to not make it to the World Cup. On the other side, I see that uh, Portuguese fans have very much the same position as the Austrian fans. That this is a supremely talented squad. Potentially the most talented in Europe, although I think uh, France, uh, France might have to say something there as well. But when you look just at the offensive power that is there, it should be, uh, they should qualify, no questions asked. The coach is holding them back. And so I think it's also a little bit important thing. If they qualify, this would mean we have the coach longer, although he might step down after the workout, which I'm not sure about Foda. Uh, but yeah, it's a tough, a tough ask. And Turkey is also an opponent that usually rises up to, to the occasion when it counts. This is an, uh, Turkey has always this never say die attitude. So I think this game is not necessarily a foregone conclusion. And it's not a foregone con conclusion that Italy have to travel to Portugal. I think Porto they, 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 they will play to uh, qualify for the World Cup. So I actually think that Turkey has a... Because of all the nervousness levels that will be there, Turkey has nothing to lose. North Macedonia have nothing to lose. Portugal and Italy have everything to lose. Nervousness will be sky high there. Moving on. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. We have to also talk about uh, CONCACAF and CONMEBOL. So what's happening in the Americas. We have a pretty big clash for the US coming up. Another uh, country where uh, nervousness levels are sky high because you've missed out and you have to play now. Mexico away from home, you have to play Costa Rica away from home and in between you have to pay, play Panama at home. And Mexico and Costa Rica away are fixtures where the US tradition do not get anything. So yeah, uh, it's all, I think the US, as far as I know, and the probably same is true for, for Mexico, they need five points. Uh, so this is either two wins or, you know, a win and two draws, or it's even such a way if Panama uh, does not uh, make enough points um, there, it probably comes down to the US playing Panama, which is a very winnable game in many ways. Um, Canada on top is sitting pretty. They just need one point. And from what I see, uh, where, is, where, where are they? They're playing away to Costa Rica. They could get, get, get there, but they have a few chances. They need one point. They will probably get this point. US uh, at Mexico. So Me 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 Mexico, I actually have, have a feeling this game will end in, in, in a draw because it's a result that could help both teams moving forward. Or oh, yes, it's a big rivalry, but you know. We'll see. Also, there have been calls for, uh, I think especially on the US side, you don't need to win in Mexico to qualify for the World Cup. So uh, as we've seen, you don't need, need to. So while this is the marquee matchup, I very much see US against Panama. That's the big one. And of course, nervousness levels, uh, from, I, mean, I hear a lot from the US fan base, is sky high. It's rivaling, rivaling Italy at this very moment. Uh, so uh, that's rather uh, not no, no, notable. That game will be played at night. And then a little bit sooner we have already the South American quarterfinals with one 
mega matchup Uruguay against Peru. Um, Uruguay more or less could say, not quite, but uh, could put themselves in a really, really, really comfortable spot if they beat Peru. Uh, and Peru definitely needs a result there. So uh, it is all about this game, and then we can uh, talk about the rest. Um, Colombia is probably out of it. There's also Chile in there, but they have to go to Brazil. So uh, there's a whole lot riding on this Uruguay-Peru matchup. I think the winner of that one will qualify. Ecuador just need a point. They play Paraguay. Should be in there. So uh, we probably have Ecuador qualified by tomorrow. But that I will talk all about to in tomorrow's video where we're going to review most of these mad ma matches with of course a focus on europe just because in any case just a little preview uh as i said this is a very exciting international break as a whole lot of uh space in, in in between although um especially south america and uh concacaf it goes bang 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 so that also make makes it interesting uh, there, I will try to keep you updated as much as I can uh, with stuff that will happen. As I said, there will be tomorrow a video, and I will fill in with reviewing jerseys uh, that I have uh, from my national team collection. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.